ice damming. What is it? It's right behind me here. We're going to talk about it, some things you can do to avoid precautions, things like that. But first, to the subscribers and followers of the channel, I am truly, genuinely sorry. It's been about three weeks. We've been MIA, nothing going on. We've been snow covered here in central Indiana, about 14 plus inches of snow on the roof since the first of the year. Not much going on. If you're a roofing contractor, tip, if you're in an area or region where it gets cold, maybe invest in a shovel, plow, or a snow tr plow truck, something, snow blower, just to supplement your income. Just a little tip there if it's your first year and you get cold, snowy weather, or stock up and save up enough to make it through the winter. Now for those that want to watch and see what ice damming is, it is essentially this big hunk of ice causing a dam. Now for my highly scientifically model I made here for you, yeah, it's just some snow I made up here like that. We packed up a little, little dam. Water's melting and flowing up to this obstruction, AKA ice dam. It has nowhere to go but fill up and pond up to this area until it either trickles around or over. It's also probably gonna trickle under a little bit but it usually melts faster than it goes under and off, hence the ice dam. You might be asking, why is it warming up? Good question, glad you asked that. Not always the case, but most of the time, there's lack of insulation and ventilation in the attic, causing the warmth to rise through faster and warm up the underneath roof deck. Melts the precip that's up there. Snow, sleet, ice, whatever. And it works its way down to a colder point of the roof. Well, why would there be a colder point of the roof? Glad you asked that one too. Now for this full size replica model over here, you see a gable, it's about a foot and a half, two foot gable overhang down the bottom. Your eave coming off of your wall of the house is maybe about four foot or so. It's gonna melt up here. It's gonna run down like you see it doing and it's gonna start freezing. Today's temperatures are pretty balmy, but nice for this time of year. There you go, there's sun's in the eye. It's about 40 degrees today, sunny. First decent day we've had and everything's melting off. So not really a good example, but the other day I was here, it was below freezing. It was freezing up on the outside of the edge down here. It was melting off. Well, I got in her house and she's got a closet here where Niagara Falls was just gushing in. There was about a four foot by four foot uh, square here where there's no insulation in that part of her attic. So the warmth of her home is radiating through much faster, warming up the roof deck, getting down to the overhang here and causing a significant ice blockage. You can see it's had a day or two to warm up now and melt off, so lots of melted, but there's a big block of ice here. And I'll talk about that here in a minute, but it backs up. There's a valley, it's a crucial area. If you imagine this here causing the dam and it fills with water, as I stated, it has nowhere to go but up under these shingles. Shingles, asphalt shingles are designed to shed water. Unless you have a low slope roof system, EPDM, TPO, roll roofing modified, just to name a few, that is a more of a waterproofing than a shedding of water. So the water is going to get under the shingles. It's going to be on your roof deck. Whether you have black paper, synthetic paper, ice and water, hopefully you got ice and water, maybe seal around the nails. Once it's under your shingles, it's going to go wherever it wants. It's warm. It's in a liquid state. It's going to trickle in around your nails, whatever the case. That's what's causing the ice dam. Essentially, that's what it is. Ice dam. Army Corps of Engineers, don't hate. I built this curvature the wrong way. It's gonna break through and kill everyone downstream, so it's gone. Um, yeah, so uh, let me see here. A couple of things of precautions. If you got ice dam, there's not a lot you can do but try to remove it and hope that it warms up quickly and gets off there. To mitigate the damage, maybe throw some buckets under it, catch it. It gets to the point you're gonna have to fix it once it's done. You can't tarp it unless you remove it. There's no point in tarping it. Your roof's not bass, just ice damming under. So if you're gonna go up on your roof, couple things. Please be careful. I'm just some dude on the internet. Don't take my advice. I'm not saying go out there and go up on your roof. I don't want you to fall off and get hurt. I'm not your mom. I'm not telling you how to do it. Just be careful. That's all I'm saying, disclaimer here. What you can do is take a broom, is what I'd recommend, and broom it off or use a rake with a pole or something to clean this down. You don't have to go all the way to the roof deck. Actually, I'd advise against that unless it's something soft. You don't want to scrape your granules off the roof. That can cause damage. You get it down to something like this, the sun will do the rest. Uh, so shovels, try to avoid that unless you're planning on redoing your roof. Now the block down here, that's a little bit different. Let's look at this block ice down here. It is pretty significant. There's an area there, it's about five inches thick. This is probably six to eight inches thick. It's not going anywhere. Now your intuition might be, let's get a hammer or a big mallet and beat it. 
I advise against that. Unless you can lightly hit it, shatter it, like shear it, crack it, and remove the pieces, you don't want to smash down in it. If you take a hammer to this, it's essentially the same thing as a uh, hail hitting your roof. Not good to your shingles. Furthermore, if you do it in the wrong area and you smack a hunk of ice down and it breaks through and your mallet hits the shingle in this area, that's a crucial section. If you popped it, cracked the valley, cracked the shingle, you're not gonna know how much damage you did until you get another rain gathers in these valleys and runs down it into a hole you put in it. That's gonna be bad news. So avoid that, just a caution. Don't be beating it. You can set yourself up for a bigger damage. Sometimes you just gotta let nature do its thing and melt off naturally. If you could carefully, you know, there's a valley right under here, so I don't wanna go hitting it too hard. You know, that's all right. But you go getting careless and smacking it down, you put too much stress and strain on a cold shingle that's fragile, you could set yourself up for some damage. Again, I'm just some random dude on the internet. Don't take my advice. Some other things I wanna point out real quick. If you look around here real fast, snow covered a lot of these roofs. This one is significantly less snow covered. That one there's starting to. The one down there is pretty significantly uncovered of snow. This isn't always the case, but I'm gonna use my house as an example here. I've got a black roof and it's still solid, covered eight to 10 inches of snow. This one's fairly dark, but it has way less snow. Not to do to the color. You might think a black roof's gonna heat up more from the sun, not necessarily. If the roof is covered with snow, it's reflecting the sun rays. It's not getting to that, heating it up. It's not gonna melt off. Now, if you have a small area starting, it's gonna warm up, it's gonna melt down, it's gonna heat up more, it's gonna start a chain reaction. But the bigger thing is, what's causing this, is the warmth radiating through from your attic. If you got an attic access, just run up there, check it. If you have little insulation to no insulation or a lack of ventilation, that's gonna be a problem. If you're not sure, just Google a insulation company in your area. Most of them probably give you a free evaluation, let you know what you need to do. That's the biggest problem right there. Not enough insulation and ventilation. Could have a problem like this. Not good. Luckily, there wasn't much in here. She set buckets up and dried it out. There was no insulation. At that point, you wanna check and uh, fix the problem. Breezy. Uh, you wanna watch out for mold and things like that. You don't want an unhealthy living condition inside. So check it out, get it handled. Once that melts off, you still wanna make sure you don't have any bad issues in these attic, in the insulation, cellulose, really especially. Even though they do treat it, it's gonna inhibit the growth of mold and mildew a lot easier than fiberglass. Plus cellulose settles, so. Again, I'm some dude on the internet. I don't know anything about insulation, so check with a qualified contractor that does insulation in your area. I hope the video helped. Again, I apologize, it's been three weeks. I haven't been able to do much, I haven't been able to talk much about it, but I want to do more. I also, I've had a lot of home time after plowing studying some new stuff so if you guys have any interest let me know drop me a comment below i've been learning a lot about crypto and investing and i want to do more of it if you have any interest to see what i'm doing if you want to watch it i'll try to shoot more of it just let me know i need to know if you want to see it basically i've got a little bit of money in crypto it's doing really well i want to 2x to 4x my money later this fall when the forbearances run out and unfortunately the real estate market starts to pop i want to throw some money into properties physical tangible assets if you have any interest let me know i'll start documenting it for your pleasure to learn from my mistakes and uh, i also have been kind of focusing on another project that's kind of private right now can't share it but i want to it's another product we're going to have on the market here hopefully I don't know, maybe a year, but it's pretty big. So if you want to see that, you want to check it out, let me know. I'll document it for you guys. Until next time, be safe and see you guys then.